Hey everybody, welcome to part four of this series, The Pursuit of My Life. Uh, thanks so much for joining me. I'm, I'm excited to talk about uh, this this piece, kind of the puzzle today, because we're talking about uh, the life of Jacob, and Jacob is a really interesting character. I mean, Jacob became Israel, who was the father of the 12 tribes of Israel, the 12 sons, you know, and he was also the father of Joseph. So, I mean, God used him in a huge way. I mean, they, they always talk about he's the, uh, God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You know, so Jacob was a, a huge character in God's story. But Jacob, uh, the name means deceiver, and he was naturally a deceiver. He deceived his father out of the blessing that belonged to Esau, his older brother. And then he kind of deceived uh, his uncle Laban, uh, when he left, and Laban didn't really treat him very well, but anyway, he deceived him and, and said, okay, I, how about I just take the sheep that have the sp sp uh, spotted and speckled or something like that. But anyway, he, he set it all up to get the best ones. And um, so it's interesting, you know, Jacob is far from a perfect character. There are no perfect characters in the Bible, but he is far from a guy who just lived his life in such a way that you would expect, oh, that guy's going to get blessed by God. You know, no. He, he lived very selfishly, at least in the stories that we read, and very much for himself, at least leading up to this story. And I'm in chapter 32 of Genesis. Um, we're going to look at verses 22. We're not going to read all of them, but if you want to read them, it's verse 22 through 32 in chapter chapter 32. And most of you know it's the story of when Jacob wrestled with God. And here's here's the context. Jacob is heading back after being away from home forever. And he kind of, he fled from home when he got the blessing and Esau didn't. So he hasn't talked to Esau since then. And he's assuming that Esau is really angry and Esau might even want to attack him and kill him and his family. And so he's, he's separated his families. And, you know, if one gets attacked, maybe the other can get away. And, and this night before he crosses the river and meets with his brother, he spends the night alone. And that's in verse 24. Uh, this left Jacob all alone in the camp. And a man came, and we believe this was Jesus, but a man came and wrestled with him until the dawn began to break. So this is all night. I mean, they're wrestling all night. And I'm sure it was, I mean, it wasn't like a nice dainty wrestle, right? I'm, I think it was an all out. We know it was an all out wrestling match because when the man saw that he would not win the match, so this is like an angel or Jesus could not win the match against Jacob. So Jacob was resolved to win this match. It says that the man touched Jacob's hip and wrenched it out of socket. And the man said, let me go for the dawn is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you, let you go unless you bless me. What is your name? The man asked. He replied, Jacob. Your name will no longer be Jacob. From now on, you will be called Israel because you have fought with God and with men and have won. And it goes on. The point, the point today, really simple, but there are times in this pursuit of my life, and the pursuit of my life is friendship with God. Such intimacy with God, like Moses met with him face to face. He came out of, this, of the tent, and Moses had met with him so intimately that Moses' face was glowing. That's the pursuit of my life. But what I know and what I read, not just in Jacob's story, but Jacob's a good example, is that sometimes in that friendship with God, there will be a wrestling match. Uh, there, there are times with Moses where God said, I am so angry with these people. Like when he came down from the mountain and they had a gold calf, I'm going to destroy them all. And Moses said, you can't do that. That's, that's going to give you a bad reputation and a bad name. God, don't do that. And it says that God changed his mind. Well, you know what? You can only have influence if you have friendship. And that's what Moses had. And Jacob recognized that this blessing from God that the it's a blessing from God. I don't know what else to call it, but he recognized that God intervening in his life was the thing he had to have, right? He valued blessing. He valued blessing, right? Because he stole it from his brother and got it from his father too. And he wouldn't let go of Jesus or this angel or whoever it was, right? He wouldn't let go of him in the wrestling match unless he blessed him. He valued this spiritual thing, this blessing from God, this intervention from God, this heaven coming down to earth to such a degree that he fought for it. And I'm not suggesting that we fight with God, but here's what I'm saying. How much do we value heaven? How much on earth? 
but I mean going to heaven. I mean heaven on earth. How much do we value the presence of God in our lives? How much do we value friendship with God and our influence with him and his influence over our lives? How much do we value his blessing? How much do we know that we know that we know we've got to have God show up? Jacob was about to face his greatest fear. That's his brother and what his older brother would do to him. He was about to face his greatest fear that he'd ever had in his entire life. Life had been pretty comfortable other than working hard generally uh, up till then. He was facing his biggest fear. And what he said to God is, I'm not going forward. I can't go forward. I will not let you go unless you're with me, unless you intervene, unless you bless me. And my question for myself, my question for you is, do we know so deep inside of us and so strongly that there is no value to moving forward in life without him? Do we know it so strongly that we fight for it, that we wrestle for it, that we go to God and say, we've got to have it because without you, and Moses said this too. God said, hey, you know what? I'll send an angel ahead of you. How about that? Moses said, no. What sets us apart is that you go with us. You've got to go with us. He, Moses said, I'd rather stay in the wilderness. This is an Exodus. I'd rather stay in the wilderness than go into the promised land without you. You, you. You are what makes us unique. You are what gives us hope and victory. And the question is in this day and age, you know, with money in the bank and a car in the, the driveway and a roof over our heads and food on our table, how much do we know that? How much do we recognize it? How much does our body almost shake over the need and the knowledge of that need that God must show up in our lives every day. And that's what I hope for you. That's what I hope for me. I hope that's our cry. I look forward to talking to you more in part five.